Hey, welcome to Draft Academy. My name is Mike. In this tutorial, I want to talk to you guys about working with strings in Ruby. Now, strings are one of the most common data types in Ruby, and for good reason. A lot of times in our programs, we're going to want to represent and store and work with plain text data. That's essentially what a string is. So in this tutorial, I want to walk you guys through the basics of using strings. We're going to look at some different things we can do with strings. We're going to also look at different things called methods, which we can use on strings. So a method is essentially just a little block of code that we can call, and it will either modify our string or give us information about our string. So it can be pretty awesome. First thing I want to do is just show you guys basically how to print out a string. So I could say puts. And over here, to create my string, I just have to put it inside of open and closed quotation marks. So anything I put inside these quotation marks is going to be considered a string. So I could just type out like draft academy. And now this is going to get printed out over here onto the screen. Works pretty well. There's a couple things we can do inside of these strings. So one thing you might be wondering is how can I print out a quotation mark? So for example, this string is surrounded by quotation marks. We use the quotation marks to tell Ruby where the string starts and ends. But what if I wanted to use quotation marks inside of this string? If I just try to put one right here, you'll see that it messes everything up and it ends the string. In order to use a quotation mark, I can put a backslash and then put the quotation mark. And this is basically going to tell Ruby, hey, I want to literally enter in the character quotation mark. I don't want to use it to end off my string. So now I should be able to print this out over here. You'll see we're printing out a quotation mark. You can also use something similar to print out a new line. So let's say that I wanted to print out draft and then on a new line print out academy. I could type a backslash n and I'm actually going to get rid of this space. And now you'll see that this is going to print out draft academy on two separate lines. So that can be pretty useful. Another thing we can do is we can store strings inside of variables. So if I didn't want to just type this out like this, I could put it inside of a variable inside of a container and it'll be a little bit easier for me to work with. So why don't we create a variable called phrase and I'm just going to set it equal to draft academy. Now, if we wanted to print this out, all I have to do is come down here and just type in the name of the variable that I want to print out. So now we'll just be printing out phrase and you'll see we're still printing out draft academy. So using these variables can be pretty useful. And when we're working with strings, we can actually use things called string methods, or sometimes you'll hear people refer to them as string functions. Essentially what these are are little blocks of code and we can call these blocks of code and they'll go off and they'll either modify our string so they'll change it in some way, shape or form, or they'll give us information about our strings. These can be really useful. And there's just a few that I want to show you and you'll kind of get the hang of how to use these. Um, whenever we're going to use one of these methods, we just want to type out either the name of the variable that's storing the string or just the string itself. And then I want to type out dot. And now I want to type in the name of the method or function that we want to access. So I'm going to show you guys a couple that are pretty useful. I found them in, them to be pretty useful. Now, the first is called upcase. So you're just going to type out upcase and then an open and closed parentheses. And actually this open and closed parentheses in a lot of situations is going to be optional, but I'm just going to include it just to be super correct. So when I type phrase dot upcase and we run this program, you'll see now it takes our string. It takes our phrase and converts it entirely into uppercase letters. You can also use another one called down case. So instead of saying upcase, we'll just say down case. And this is going to convert it down to all lowercase letters. So this can be a pretty useful little function. There's also another one called strip. So if I had a string that had a bunch of leading and trailing spaces, right, I wouldn't necessarily want to just print this out. So if I print this out onto my screen, you'll see that we get it printed out all weird, right? There's these, you know, spaces in front, there's these spaces after. You can use a method called strip. So I'm just going to type out phrase dot strip. And now when I run my program, all of that leading and trailing white space gets deleted. So a lot of cases when you're dealing with a variable, you might not know if it has leading and trailing white space. So you can use this strip method to make sure that all that disappears. We can also use these methods to find out information about our strings. For example, instead of saying strip, I could say phrase dot length. And this is going to tell me how many characters are inside of this string. So you can see over here we get 24 and actually let me get rid of all this white space. So now we should get a smaller number 15. So draft Academy has 15 characters in it. That's including any of the spaces that we put inside of it. In addition to figuring out how many characters are in a string, I could also figure out 
if certain text shows up in my strings. So for example, I could say phrase dot include. So I'm going to say include, and now I'm going to type a question mark and then I'm going to type a space and now I'm going to type a string. I'm going to type another string. Basically what we're saying is we're asking this include method, whether or not this phrase includes the string that we're going to put over here. So for example, if I put Academy right here, this is going to return a true or a false value telling us whether or not the word Academy shows up inside of our phrase. So over here, we should get a true value because Academy does show up. If I was to type out like academies though, so for example, this isn't inside of our phrase, it's going to give me a false value. So that's a really good way to figure out if a certain string or a certain phrase or a certain character shows up in the string that you're working with. We could also access individual characters inside of these strings. So for example, let's say that I wanted to just figure out what the first character in this string was. So maybe I was just given this variable phrase and I don't know what's inside of it and I wanted to figure out what the first character is. I can type out the string and then I can make an open and closed square bracket. And inside of these square brackets, I can put the index of the character that I want to access. So if I wanted to access this G, I can actually put a zero inside of here. So now you'll see this is just going to print out that G. If I wanted to access this I, I could put a one in here and this is going to print out the I. If I wanted to access this A, for example, I could, it was going to be zero, one, two, three. So I'm going to put a three in here and now we'll be able to access that A. So if you haven't caught on already, the way that we assign index positions to strings in Ruby is starting with zero. So if I was going to give these characters index positions, I would say that G is at index position zero. I is at index position one, R2, A3, F4, other F5, E6, etc. So whenever we want to access the first character in a string, we have to access it using index position zero. And this is kind of like a staple of using strings in Ruby. The first character is always at index position zero. So essentially Ruby starts counting at zero. So anytime we want to use this little method right here where we're just passing it a number, you always want to start with zero as the first character. So let's do a little experiment. Let's say I wanted to access this capital A. It's going to be zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So I put an eight in here. Now we're going to print out that capital A. So play around with these different string indexes. You know, this is obviously not super difficult to understand, but you want to get used to starting indexes at zero as you start programming. You can also print out a range of characters. So let's say I wanted to figure out what the first three characters inside of this string were. Well, I can say zero and I can type a comma and I can basically specify a range. So I can say I want to print out or I want to get access to the characters from position index position zero up to another index position. So we can say zero, let's say we want the first three, I can say zero up to zero, one, two, three. And this is actually going to give me the first three characters. So it's going to give me zero, one, and two. And it's actually not going to give me that third index position character. So I should just get G I R here. You can see that's exactly what we get. So when we specify a range down here, we start the range at the first index position zero and we end it at three, but we don't include the character at index position three. So we didn't include this a. So that's basically how we can grab like characters in a specific range inside of a string. You can also use another method and I'm just going to type phrase dot index. And basically what this is going to do is it's going to tell us what position a specific character in our string starts at. So for example, I could say phrase dot index and I could type in like a capital G and this should give me a zero because zero is where our capital G is at. If I typed in like a capital A here, this should give me the index position where capital A shows up inside of our string. So that's going to be an eight. You can also type in just a normal string here. So I could say like FFE and this will tell me where FFE starts inside of my string and it starts at index position four. So zero, one, two, three, four. This index method is actually pretty useful. So these string methods can be extremely useful when you're working with strings and they basically just allow you to take your strings and you can either modify them or you can find out different information about them. And these are going to be very useful. I also just want to point out that you can use these little methods on things other than just variables. 
So for example, if I came down here, I could print out like a string and I could say dot and now I could say like upcase and it's still gonna work exactly like it worked when we use it on that variable. So now when I run this, it'll do exactly the same thing. So you don't have to have these inside of variables in order to use these different methods. So those are just a couple of the different methods that you can use with strings in Ruby. What I would recommend is going on Google and just typing in like Ruby string methods and there, you know, there should be like huge lists of all the different methods that you can use with these strings. But I would say for the most part, those are some of the most common methods that you're gonna be seeing. And really, I just wanted to give you guys an introduction into how we can work with strings inside of our programs. Wanted to talk about how we can use different methods to do different things. Hopefully you've learned something and hopefully now you can go off and start playing around with strings inside of your programs. Hey, thanks for watching. If you enjoyed the video, please leave a like and subscribe to Draft Academy to be the first to know when we release new content. Also, we're always looking to improve, so if you have any constructive criticism or questions or anything, leave a comment below. Finally, if you're enjoying Draft Academy and you want to help us grow, head over to draftacademy.com forward slash contribute and invest in our future.